Hello, everybody. Welcome back to section 2.5. To finish out this section, we're going to look at a nice theorem called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And if you want to say that for short, you can just say IVT. People will know what you mean <laughs> mathematically. So the Intermediate Value Theorem first requires us to suppose a couple things. We are going to suppose our function f of x is continuous on a certain interval that we're looking at. So that's the interval from a to b. And then we also have to suppose that y sub 0 here, um, so you can say that as y sub 0, indicating that subscript. Or the other way you commonly hear this um, pronounced in the physics so is why not? So it's spelled like this, not meaning like zero, like nothing, not. Um, kind of an old timey saying there. Um, but yeah, we can say that as why not? Because why not? Ah, <laughs> jokes. Um, all right, so we have y not, and that is a number between f of a and f of b. So those are referring to different y values. f of a is a y value, f of b is a y value, y not is a y value, somewhere between those. Okay, so if all of these criteria, the things we're supposing here, if all of this is met, then there must be a number c in that interval from a to b where f of c equals y naught. Okay, so just to refresh here, c, a, and b, those are all x values. So c is in the interval between x equals a and x equals b. And y naught is in that interval of y values between f of a and f of b. Okay, so that is our theorem statement. Let's definitely look at this with a picture as well. That helps. Okay, so let's set ourselves up a little axis here. x, f of x. All right, now f of x needs to be continuous on the interval from a to b. So a, b, all right, and um, let's put some points there. So that would be f of a for that y value, and we'll just say uh, this is f of b up here. Okay, and f of x is continuous on that interval, so there are no weird holes in the graph, jumps, vertical asymptotes, nothing funky going on. So let's just make a nice, smooth-looking function there. There's f of x, it's continuous. And then we'll put in our y naught value. So y naught is a number between f of a and f of b. So We'll just pick some nice value in here for our picture's sake. Let's say that's why not. So all of our conditions are met with this picture. Okay, it's continuous on the interval from A to B. Why not is a number between F of A and F of B. So then there must be a number C in the interval A to B where f of c equals y naught. And we can see that on the picture here. All right, so y naught is f of c. That means c would be right here. Okay, so f of c equals y naught. All right, so our intermediate value theorem holds true and is satisfied here. Now, let's draw one more picture um, just to get a more interesting looking function involved here. I want to show you guys one thing with this. Okay, let's make another interval A to B. And um, 
let's just say f of a is up here now because it really doesn't matter which is greater f of a or f of b still okay as long as y naught is in between those values so let's say uh, y naught is going to be right here okay and now i'm going to make a nice continuous function between a and b on that interval but i'm going to make it a little more curvy than the last one let's say it does something like this okay that's a continuous function still no discontinuities involved there but notice with this function there must be a number c in our interval for f of c equals y naught but here we happen to have more than one c value where f of c equals y naught so this is okay this is all right according to the ivt all right, we've got one C value right here, F of C1 equals Y naught. We could say like this is C2 and this is C3 and that is still okay. All the IVT is guaranteeing us is that there's at least one number C where this is satisfied. If there's more than one C, that's not off limits. It's just, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. We're not guaranteed that there's going to be more than one, but we are guaranteed that it's going to happen. Okay, so I'll make us a little note. There can be more than one C value. Okay, more than one C value where? f of c equals y naught. Okay, but there doesn't have to be. Now the other thing I wanted us to look at before we got into our next part of this um, was in this setup for the theorem um, and why this is in section 2.5. Okay, so notice we have to suppose that f of x is continuous on this interval. So this is why they put this theorem in section 2.5, because 2.5 is all about continuity. So why this has to hold true, we can look at a little picture here and see what's going on with that. So this is a little kind of side note for us. f of x can not be discontinuous on our interval or else we're going to run into some issues. Okay, discontinuous on A, B, definitely not. Okay, so one example of this, why it can't be discontinuous, we can see with a little picture again. You know, I love my pictures. Okay. So here's our interval A, B. I'll set it up kind of like we were starting our other pictures. Here's F of A. Okay, here's F of B right there. And we'll put Y naught in the middle of those values. Okay, and now I'm going to let F of X be discontinuous. So I'm going to make it a piecewise function with a jump discontinuity right here. All right. Now notice that since our function is discontinuous, we actually never end up having a C value where F of C equals Y naught the y values of this function on the interval manage to completely avoid the y value of y naught. Okay, so by having that discontinuity, we're no longer guaranteed that we're going to have f of c equals y naught at any point. All right, we completely miss the y naught value. So 
there's no C to satisfy the intermediate value theorem with this. And that's why f of x really has to be continuous, and that's why the IVT is in section 2.5.